New Zealand is a remote land, one of the last sizable territories suitable for habitation to be populated and settled, and lies more than 1,000 miles southeast of Australia, its nearest neighbour. The country comprises two main islands, the North and the South Island, and a number of small islands, some of them hundreds of miles from the main group. The capital city is Wellington, and the largest urban area is Auckland, both are located on the North Island. New Zealand is a land of great contrasts and diversity. Active volcanoes, spectacular caves, deep glacier lakes, verdant valleys, dazzling fjords, long sandy beaches, and the spectacular snow-capped peaks of the Southern Alps, all contribute to New Zealand's scenic beauty. New Zealand also has a unique array of vegetation and animal life, much of which developed during the country's prolonged isolation. But, despite New Zealand's isolation, the country has been fully engaged in international affairs since the early 20th century, being an active member of a number of intergovernmental institutions, including the United Nations. Economically the country was dependent on the export of agricultural products, especially to Great Britain. The entry of Britain into the European community in the early 1970s, however, forced New Zealand to expand its trade relations with other countries. It also began to develop a much more extensive and varied industrial sector. Tourism has played an increasingly important role in the economy, though this sector has been vulnerable to global financial instability. The social and cultural gap between New Zealand's two main groups, the indigenous Maori of Polynesian heritage, and the colonizers and later immigrants from the British Isles and their descendants, has decreased since the 1970s, though educational and economic differences between the two groups remain. Immigration from other areas, Asia, Africa, and Eastern Europe, has also made a mark, and New Zealand culture today reflects these many influences. New Zealand is about 1,000 miles long north-south and about 280 miles across at its widest point. The country has slightly less surface area than the state of Colorado, and a little more than the United Kingdom. About two-thirds of the land is economically useful, the remainder being mountainous. Because of its numerous harbors and fjords, the country has an extremely long coastline relative to its area. Although New Zealand is small, its geologic history is complex. 
The land has existed in the vicinity of New Zealand for most of the past 500 million years. The earliest known rocks originated as sedimentary deposits some 545 million to 540 million years ago, at the close of Precambrian time, and the beginning of the Cambrian period. Their source area was probably the continental forelands of Australia and Antarctica, then part of a nearby single supercontinent. The movement of large plates of Earth's crust created a distinct island arc, an oceanic trench structure, by the Carboniferous period about 359 to 299 million years ago, when deposition began in the trenches of the sedimentary rocks that today make up some three-fourths of New Zealand. This environment lasted about 250 million years, and is typified by both down-warped oceanic sedimentary rocks, and terrestrial volcanic rocks. This period was terminated in the west at the beginning of the Cretaceous period, about 145 million years ago, by the Rangitata orogeny, although down-warp deposition continued in the east. These mountains were slowly worn down by erosion, and the sea transgressed, eventually covering almost all of the land. But at the end of the Oligocene epoch, the land starts to rise above the sea again. Many of the great earth movements associated with this final orogeny took place along faults, which divide the landscape into great blocks, chief of which is the Alpine Fault of the South Island. The erosion and continued movement of these faulted blocks, together with the continuing volcanism of the North Island, defined to a large extent the landscape of the country. New Zealand is part of the Ring of Fire, the Circum-Pacific Seismic Belt, marked by frequent earthquakes and considerable volcanic activity. The North Island, and the western part of the South Island, are on the Indian-Australian Plate, and the remainder of the South Island is on the Pacific Plate. Their collision creates violent seismic activity in subduction zones, and along faults. Numerous earthquakes occur annually, including hundreds that can be felt by New Zealanders. A number of these temblers have been disastrous, such as one that devastated the towns of Napier and Hastings in 1931, and a series of quakes that did likewise in Christchurch in 2010 to 2011. Both, the North and the South Islands, are roughly bisected by mountains. Swift snow-fed rivers drain from the hills, although only in the east of the South Island have extensive alluvial plains been built up.
The Southern Alps are a 300 miles long chain of fold mountains, containing New Zealand's highest mountain, Mount Cook at 12,316 feet, and some 20 other peaks that rise above 10,000 feet, as well as an extensive glacier system with associated lakes. There are more than 360 glaciers in the Southern Alps. The Tasman Glacier, the largest in New Zealand, with a length of 18 miles and a width of more than 0.5 miles, flows down the eastern slopes of Mount Cook. In the north of the South Island, the Alps break up into steep upswelling ridges. On their western face, there are mineral deposits, and to the east they continue into two parallel ranges, terminating in a series of sounds. To the south, the Alps break up into a rugged, dissected country of difficult access and magnificent scenery, particularly toward the western tip of the island. On its eastern boundary, this wilderness borders a high central plateau called Central Otago, which has an almost continental climate. The terrain of the North Island is much less precipitous than that of the South, and has a more benign climate and greater economic potential. In the center of the island, the volcanic plateau rises abruptly from the southern shores of Lake Taupo, New Zealand's largest natural lake, itself an ancient volcanic crater. To the east, ranges form a backdrop to a rolling country in which pockets of highly fertile land are associated with the river systems. To the south, more ranges run to the sea. On the western and eastern slopes of these ranges, the land is generally poor, although the western downland region is fertile until it fades into a coastal plain dominated by sand dunes. To the west of the volcanic plateau, fairly mountainous country merges into the undulating farmlands of the Taranaki region, where the mild climate favors dairy farming even on the slopes of Mount Taranaki, a volcano that has been dormant since the 17th century. The northern shores of Lake Taupo bound a large area of high economic activity, including forestry. Even farther north, there are river terraces sufficiently fertile for widespread dairy and mixed farming. The hub of this area is Auckland, which is situated astride an isthmus with a deep harbour on the east, and a shallow harbour on the west. The peninsular region north of Auckland, called Northland, becomes gradually subtropical in character, marked generally by numerous deep encroaching inlets of the sea bordered by mangrove swamps. The mountainous country of both islands is cut by many rivers, which are swift, unnavigable, and obstructive to communication. The longest is the Waikato, in the North Island, and the swiftest is the Klutha, in the South.
Many of the rivers arise from or drain into one or other of the numerous lakes associated with the mountain chains. A number of these lakes have been used as reservoirs for hydroelectric projects, and artificial lakes, such as the large Lake Benmore, have been created for hydroelectric power generation. New Zealand's soils are often deeply weathered, lacking in many nutrients, and most of all, highly variable over short distances. Soils based on sedimentary rock formations, are primarily clays found in over three-fourths of the country. Pockets of fertile alluvial soil in river basins or along river terraces, form the orchard and market gardening regions of the country. In the South Island, variations in mean annual precipitation have had a significant effect. The brown-gray soils of central Otago are thin and coarse textured and have subsoil accumulations of lime. New Zealand's climate is complex and varies from warm subtropical in the far north to cool temperate climates in the far south, with severe alpine conditions in the mountainous areas. Mountain chains extending the length of New Zealand, provide a barrier to the prevailing westerly winds, dividing the country into dramatically different climate regions. The west coast of the South Island is the wettest area of New Zealand, whereas the area to the east of the mountains, just over 100 kilometers away, is the driest. Because of the high mountain chains that lie across the path of the prevailing winds, the contrast in climate from west to east is sharper than that from north to south. Mountain ranges are also responsible for the semi-continental climate of central Otago. The vegetation of New Zealand consisted of mixed evergreen forests covering perhaps two-thirds of the total land area. The island's prolonged isolation encouraged the evolution of species unknown to the rest of the world. Almost nine-tenths of the plants are peculiar to the country. On the west coast of the South Island, this mixed forest still yields most of the native timber used by industry. Along the mountain chain running the length of the country, the false beech is the predominant forest tree. European settlement made such inroads into the natural forest that erosion in high country areas became a serious problem. Various government agencies were established to manage and conserve forests, beginning in the late 19th century and a state forest service was established in 1921 to repair the damage. It uses forest management techniques and does reforestation, using exotic trees. Because of New Zealand's isolation, when the Maori arrived in the 13th century, they found few animals. There were three kinds of reptiles, skinks, geckos, and tuatara, the latter beak-headed reptiles having been extinct elsewhere for 100 million years, and also a few primitive species of frogs and two species of bats. 
In addition to their domestic animals, Europeans also brought other species with them like red deer, which was introduced for sport hunting, and the Australian opossums for skins. New Zealand is known as the seabird capital of the world, and is also home to a number of forest birds that live nowhere else on Earth. There are many reasons why the birds of New Zealand are remarkable and special. A lot of it has to do with the lack of that power that makes a bird a bird, the ability to fly. Flightlessness is only one characteristic contributing to the uniqueness of our birds. Many New Zealand birds are also very long-lived, and have slow breeding rates, as well as small clutch sizes and large eggs. Several species are nocturnal, and others have a large body size. All these features have contributed to their extinction or decline. New Zealand's economy is developed, but it is comparatively small in the global marketplace. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, New Zealand's standard of living, based on the export of agricultural products, was one of the highest in the world, but after the mid-20th century, the rate of growth tended to be one of the slowest among the developed countries. The minerals industry plays an important part in the New Zealand economy contributing jobs, infrastructure royalties, and GDP. New Zealand has a number of mineral resources, including gold, silver, iron sands, phosphate, and limestone. Rock, sand, and aggregate resources are also mined for construction uses. Gold rushes occurred in the Otago, the West Coast, and the Coromandel regions in the 1860s. The easily accessible resources, able to be worked by individuals using simple equipment, were quickly exhausted and larger scale mining techniques were adopted. Despite this, the production of gold in New Zealand peaked in 1905. In the early 2000s, gold production in New Zealand predominantly occurred at two large open cast mines, at Waihi and Macrae's. New Zealand has extensive coal and lignite resources, mainly in the Waikato, Taranaki, West Coast, Otago, and Southland regions. National in-ground resources of all coal exceed 15 billion tons. Around 80% of the coal resource is lignite, which is found in Southland and Central Otago. New Zealand uses coal for domestic purposes such as electricity generation, hothouse horticulture, heating large buildings such as universities, schools, and hospitals. The public service sector is a large employer, especially in Wellington, 
where the head offices of government departments are located. Tourism is an important part of New Zealand's economy. Most of the country's visitors originate from Australia, the United Kingdom, the United States, and China. In spite of the rugged nature of the country, most of the inhabited areas of New Zealand are readily accessible. The road system is good even in rural districts, and the main cities have express highway systems. Though the difficult terrain of the country often can make for slow journeys, the distances involved are seldom great. In the 19th and much of the 20th century, New Zealand depended on shipping for trade and the movement of people. The main towns were located on or near good natural harbors. The major ports are now Auckland, Wellington, and Littleton. The railway network was owned and operated by the government until the 1990s, and since then it has been in and out of private ownership. From 2008 the country's freight and passenger railways were owned and operated by a state-owned enterprise known as Kiwarail. Rail travel is notoriously slow, which discourages passenger travel, but service is efficient for large-scale movement of goods over considerable distances. The difficulty of the terrain has dramatically encouraged air travel in New Zealand. Most provincial towns have airports, and all major urban centres are linked by air service. The national airline, Air New Zealand, has majority government ownership, although, like the railways, it was for a time privately owned. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to give a like, share, and subscribe.